On this episode of Big Boys Don't Cry, we discuss the films Rebecca from 1940 and Rebecca from 2020. You don't have to have seen either film to enjoy the podcast, but if you do proceed to listen without having seen well, either of the films or read the book, maybe, um, just be aware that we do talk about elements of the plot and there may be spoilers. Enjoy. Hello, I can hear some strange squeaking noises. <laughs> Hello, yes, it's me. I'm a distressed mouse. Do you want to That's ask funny. me what it's like being a distressed mouse? Yes, what is it like being a distressed mouse? Not great, if I'm honest. No. Although it's amazing the places I can squeeze myself into. <laughs> which, is, which is good in lockdown, having lots of spaces, you know, you can go on and more adventures. Yeah, there's no rule about how many mice can get together, is there? No, exactly. The mice aren't in lockdown. Yeah, they're not um they're not in bubbles, are they? No. Unless they're in one of those what do they call it? A rat king? That's kinda of like yeah, a Yeah, the rat I king. It's a terrifying Where a bunch of mice thing. all get together to be in a big nasty bundle. In the video game The Last of Us Part Two, um, there is an enemy called the Rat King, which is lots of different zombie monsters all attached together in a horrifying congealed mess. Um, Sounds great. And it's very hard to kill and very scary. And then when you are able to kill it, bits of it start coming off and attacking you separately. And it's very, very unpleasant. Lovely. Just what we need for, you know, the episode after Halloween. (laughs) Now that (laughs) Halloween's over, we can stop talking about scary shit. It's like, well, not really. We're transitioning out of that, aren't we? Yeah. and, and, And I think the movies, plural, that we've watched for this week are that kind of transitionary period aren't they from yeah from from spooky to lovely and it's been a week where like you know it feels like w- winter is here it was minus one this morning when i opened the door yeah the mist was rolling in this morning um, yeah couldn't couldn't see properly outside of the house just lots of mist everywhere the mist that's hanging around here feels like harry potter mist you know like the dementors are gonna come down and get me oh that would be good not <laughs> not to get you but to have harry potter thanks mist. a lot not not to get you specifically but to to have to have that kind of mist is like the best mist it is it's good mist it it is atmospheric i'll give you that yeah it's brilliant i I don't dislike it oh i like a bit of mist um yeah but this is where we are this year is somehow still happening yeah it's still going on somehow you know the last two or three days feel like they've gone on for an incredibly long time yep feels like we haven't recorded in ages you know it feels like yeah you know, just the other day we were watching something as funny and goofy as Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, and now it's lockdown too. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, no, no seeing people, no going places, just being stuck in a house. Unfortunately, not in Mandalay. No, which is where it would be good that to be, be stuck okay somewhere place like that. To be yeah. locked down. To, uh, if you if you employ like, if you're like a rich bastard and you have a massive house and you employ loads of people, do they? Are they allowed to go to work? Like, and they can't work from home, can they? So, like, are they allowed to come into your house and serve you? That, is a, that is a really good question. We should really ask Jacob Rees-Mogg that, since I assume yeah. he knows the answer. I'm um, sure he'd be really open with us about it. Yeah, I'm sure he would explain it perfectly. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah that's, that's very interesting, actually. Um, I haven't thought about that. If you, if you are a Downton Abbey sort... Can you have all of your vile servants, those those peasants, <laughs> in your company, or do they? Hugh Bonneville, I know you listen every week. <laughs> yeah, what, what what's going on? If if Downton Abbey was going now, if you, I I suppose a lot of those houses don't, um, you know, the, the the wealthy have moved away from that kind of lifestyle, haven't they? But I'm yeah. sure there's still quite a lot of them around that do have do have that kind of help. Yeah, you know, not necessarily a housekeeper, a Mrs. Danvers type, but you might have a, cl- a cleaner or, a, you know, nannies and those kinds of things. Jacob Brees Mogg is definitely all about the nannies, having proudly never changed a nappy in his life. Yes, yeah. Um, not a fan of the nanny state, big fan of actual nannies. <laughs> <laughs> should put that on his, his campaign poster. <laughs> yeah. We need more nannies and less nanny state. Hey, vote, that, that's snappy, you know. Vote Jacob Rees-Mogg for dickhead of the year. 
2021. <laughs> He's going to need to campaign really hard for that one. He's got some stiff competition. <laughs> <laughs> some stiff dicks to, to compete against. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And some limp ones too. And some limp ones, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's been all sorts going on. Donald Trump is furious on Twitter and lying constantly. Oh, um, what's new? We've we've got. Is it 2016 again? <laughs> but at least now you get a little message saying what what this guy's tweeted is a, a load of old shit, which yeah. is great. I, I appreciate that. Um, and I, I wish they brought it into effect four years ago, or exactly, five years yeah. ago, or six years ago. <laughs> so it's a, finally, they've been allowing people to peddle the most egregious bullshit for almost a decade, and now they're finally adding a little label that goes, hey, hey did you this know is, this might be bollocks? This, this random shit. shit that this person has completely made up and spewed onto the internet, facilitated by us, a private company, might be total bollocks. <laughs> I mean, it's great, isn't it? They finally clocked it. Um, yeah, um, you know, there's been some, some positives out of the election. Hopefully we'll get the most positive in, in the coming days. Um, but there's also been some negatives. So a QAnon member has been elected into Congress, which is amazing. Um, we've also got a 25 year old Republican who visited, um, Adolf Hitler's summer home on holiday. Um, he has been elected into Congress and is the youngest serving, uh, congressman. Um, which is not at all scary, um, but uh, yeah. So there's there's all sorts going on in America at the moment. I mean, we're not wants to we're not wants to talk because we have the British political system and the current British political leadership. But come on, guys, someone apart from New Zealand has got to sort their shit out. Yeah, I I, I feel like it's going to happen. Someone's going to get it right somewhere. I think we need to we need to set up our own political party. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, I thought you were going to say we need to set up our own country. Oh, that too. Of the, the step one, set up our own country. Step two, set up our own political party. Step three, suppress any other political parties. Then we are presidents for life. Yeah, we just need to buy an island, I guess. Here, you can get them pretty cheap these days. Yeah, let's get an island. Where would you? Where would you want your country to be? Because you're not a big fan of the heat, so. No, I'd like Having to a kind of off- have an icy offshore. island, it's like yeah. somewhere in the North Sea, near Greenland. We could, we could, we could buy an island in Scotland, maybe. That's and true. Then, yeah, and they just annex it and just say, "This is ours now." You yeah. have no, you know, you have no jurisdiction here. We're declaring the Republic of Big Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The de- the <laughs> Democratic Republic of of Big Boys. Yeah, any and all Big Boys welcome. Romance encouraged. Guy Fieri is king. <laughs> no, Guy Fieri is our flag. Yeah. Our, our flag is, it, the bottom part is like a flame shirt design. And then at the top, it's like frosted tips and then there's sunglasses <laughs> in the middle. The world's first frosted tipped flag. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Capital city, flavor town. It's literally yeah, like flavor one town. restaurant where you and me just like cook, bur- cook burgers. Yeah. That's that's what's going to happen. Our main, but our main export podcast content. Yeah, and egregious bullshit. Yeah, and taxes are really high because we care a lot about public services. Yeah, we just tax the shit out of everybody. Yeah, everybody um, being me and you. Ninety <laughs> yeah. percent tax goes directly into the other person's pockets. Yeah, exactly. And then we're both even, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm liking the sound um, of this more and more. So, so speaking of of class warfare, um, the movie Rebecca, although the book, uh, the original book, has quite a lot of, of of class discussion is in it, I'd argue that neither of the movies truly grasps that. I was interested that you used that as a segue then, because I was going to say that's not something that I would attach to either of the films. But I have not read the book. Have you? Ah. So yes, yes, yeah, it's it's a, it's a big favorite of mine. Um, and I think Nerd. part of that is because yeah, I know books are for nerds. Um, oh. <laughs> as we've long established, books are well rubbish, mate. Um, so many goddamn words. But but Rebecca the novel has some very interesting thematic elements to it. 
um so obviously you've got the main story but then you've got all of the class element of it where it's you know it's this very historic um rich family where sh- where mrs de winter marries into it from 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 a lower stock um and you've got that um that violent reaction against her by uh mrs danvers and you know there's a lot of a lot is made of the um the lesbian subtext between mrs danvers and rebecca uh is discussed by by theorists a lot but there's also this class element where she mrs danvers feels as though she is part of this family because she came with her but in reality she's never been anything other than the help and and matters that are very personal to rebecca were never discussed with this person who felt that you know she was almost a part of that family dynamic um which i don't think is fully discussed in either of the films no you don't get Um, that from mrs danvers do you you get that with the the unnamed protagonist the second mrs de winter that comes across a bit more in the films but again i imagine is explored more deeply in the book where it's this whole kind of like is she good enough for him and that kind of the insecurity mrs danvers has about that playing off against her own insecurity as well and thinking that it's kind of like who am i as you know i was a a a paid companion i'm an orphan i don't have any money i don't have this that and whatever but he wanted to marry her anyway um and obviously her insecurity about all of that is kind of at the root of it but as you say in the in the film that doesn't come across so much i don't know how it is in the book yeah and I, i think in the book it's one of it's a very complex novel there's a lot to discuss about it which is part of the reason why i like it so much is you know at, at the surface it's this story of 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 love and betrayal um but actually there's an awful lot more going on that we can talk about you know from from a from a society based level um and i think neither of the movies truly gets to that point um and they very much focus on the actual plot and scary mrs danvers um a lot more goddamn um, so- movies and their plots <laughs> How, yeah. how dare they yeah. focus on the plot and try and tell a story? For fuck's sake, what are yeah, all these get... filmmakers doing? Alfred yeah, Hitchcock, I... <laughs> Alfred Hitch plot, more like. Alfred, shitcock. <laughs> <laughs> he could hitch a plot onto anything. He could, he could. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so so had you watched... Um, had you watched the original Rebecca movie? Before? Yeah, I, I saw it a long time ago. I think when we were in... First year of university, excuse me, <laughs> the long week. <laughs> when we were in our um, first year of university, I think I saw it then, because it it's, it's held up as one of those screenwriting masterpieces, isn't it? As well as having this, this amazing literary um, background to it as well. And I remember thinking it was good at the time, but um, just f- from a purely kind of classic, you know, writing, screenwriting point of view and knowing how great Hitchcock was, having seen some of his other works and stuff, it was very much all about Hitchcock for me. Um, at the time, but having watched, rewatched it recently, I was I was completely floored by it. I thought it was amazing, and I, I appreciated the performances a lot more than I did before. You know, before because I saw it a long time ago, before we became these the serious film critics that we are now. So I was able to get a lot more out of it actually this time around. Yeah, because we have developed into the greatest critical minds of our generation now. Yeah, no one could out critic <laughs> us. No, exactly. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so 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 I I think I probably I must have watched it at uni, but I think I'd already seen the original before then. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's one of those those. Oh, you must watch Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca. It's a classic film. That is what people say. They, it's brilliant. Um, and um, and yeah, and it is good. It is a good adaptation. I hadn't watched it in a very long time. Um, and when people say things like that in that voice, you know that's, that it usually means that they're wrong and it's actually a boring film. But in this case, I think it's not true. No, it, it's a very entertaining film. It's one of those movies of the era that really has stood the test of time um, and is very rewatchable. Um, one of the things that I found very interesting is that I didn't remember how sanitized it was in comparison to the original work and into in comparison to the 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 second well not the second movie but the most recent movie um of rebecca in terms of of certain plot elements so spoiler alert for a novel that's nearly a hundred <laughs> years old now um god yeah but but rebecca is not a very nice person um she was a bad and, woman 
we we get to use our favorite term she she is cucking maxim de winter <laughs> isn't yeah. she um which is which is which he is doesn't get kind of cucked of... in the film or the book he's been pre-cucked <laughs> yeah the cucking happens off screen yeah um the cucking is in media res um <laughs> but um but yeah so and then he he shoots and kills her in in the book and this you find out um you know it's the big twist is you think the whole time that maxim is is finding it very hard to get over the death of the rebecca um and and the new mrs de winter the second mrs de winter she can never compare um and that's what she's worried about but in reality he hated her and she was cruel to him and a very manipulative person and eventually he shot her and then like made it look like she killed herself by by drowning and, and crashing by her boat putting some holes in a boat yeah um but yes um and and i i did not remember that in the in the hitchcock one instead it's that she fell over and banged her head or something instead and that's how she died yeah um, and that she which is it still has the same thing of like she wanted him to kill her because she was terminally ill or whatever yes, but it's yeah. like he didn't really even do it she tripped over she tripped over the door of the open dishwasher she stood on <laughs> yeah, what movie was that was that garden, garden state. state yeah um, alfred she... hitchcock's garden state <laughs> alfred hitchcock's garden state she stood on a rake in the garden and it went up and hit her in the head yeah and, and then, then she, she slipped fell on into a banana a... skin <laughs> and she fell into a cactus patch um and, yeah, and then rolled and then into that's... the sea yeah and then that's how she died um yeah <laughs> Which I don't remember it being that sanitized. Clearly, they didn't feel comfortable making it as as violent as as the original work. Um, it was nineteen forty, right? It was. I yeah. Mean, so at that point in film, you have to think film is still a new medium. People are still working out what stories they can and can't tell on film, and what people are willing to accept. And I guess with it being that much more vivid than books. At the time, I think that it might have even been considered quite risque in the way that it portrays some things or uses some certain words or that kind of thing. For the time, it was probably it was ahead of its time, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it's interesting because it is seen as this, you know, this incredible classic film, you know, for a movie from 1940, it feels very watchable and very real mm. and very artistically interesting um and it feels like a film from 1940 but in the best possible way you know often you watch those kind of films and it's just a lot of people talking like this and then talking like this and then there's endless people talking like this over and over and over having lots of conversations those kind of films from that era are mostly conversations but with this one you don't really mind do you no no and 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 you're right there's a lot of conversation but also there's a lot of interesting cinematography and things like that um the the end i think is fantastic where the 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 way that the fire spreads through mandalay spoiler alert the house burns down again this book is nearly 100 years old it was written in 1938 yep so if you if you don't want spoilers too bad this this book has been out a very long time and also Um, we always have spoilers in the show so if you've gotten this far but, but um but but you know some sometimes people like to like to listen anyway and um, and, and then go read it. books and then go read the book um which you should never do because books are well rubbish you've no. got two movies you got here. The two two movies and um, there are other adaptations as well yeah you've got the the stage musical you've got the rap battle you've got yeah. the interpretive dance you got the prog rock concept album yeah um exactly it's uh it's it's all good in fact there, there's a very funny adaptation i can't remember um who did it but it's a a comic of rebecca but it's it's like the prequel to rebecca um where it's basically uh rebecca walking oh, so it the shows the cooking and then mrs danvers going you'll never be as good as the second mrs de winter <laughs> <laughs> which i think was yeah very funny i can't remember who did it but one um one one web comic artist i think it was um did it and it's 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 very well done um but yeah but rebecca is one of those stories which is really um it, it's been incredibly influential and obviously it's become one of these great tales to be sold and i think that there is this timeless quality to the story um you know because it because it's all about inadequacy and family and relationships and trust mm. um which i think a lot of people can get behind and a lot of people can find that very interesting um 
but what's what's fascinating is the way that that can then be romanticized so i mean mm. from your perspective as a soy boy beta cuck um <laughs> a woke man on the maxim de winter murders his wife i'm not sure he is a very good human being she but... was gonna die anyway though and she... she wanted to die, and she tricked him into doing it. But he didn't what... know that, and then he <laughs> shot and killed his wife. What happens in the um, the 2020 version? I can't remember. It's been over a week since I watched it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My memories are all of the Hitchcock one. Um, so, so yeah, in, in the, the, the 2020 version um, by Ben Wheatley, um, basically generally that's part of the plot follows the book so again he she sort of gets him into such a rage that he then shoots her and kills her um and um and yeah i think yeah rebecca is a as a monstrous human being who's also having sex with her cousin that's not good no um her extremely is... smug weird cousin <laughs> yeah exactly um but um, but even so, d- that does not necessarily justify her husband <laughs> shooting her dead. Well, um, it was 1938. You know, they did things differently back then. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't like your wife, you shot her. Um, yeah, you yeah. couldn't get a divorce. That didn't happen until Henry VIII in 1945. Yeah, Henry VIII in 1945 brought in divorce. After he won the Second World War, yeah. he was like, I want to divorce my wife. That's what the Second World War was really about was yeah. Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife. Yeah. Um, Everyone knows that. Yeah, exactly. That is Adolf Hitler was all like, oh no, you can't do that, mate. Yeah. I'm going to take over Europe to he- prove it to you. And Henry VIII was like, Winston, come with me. And then they just beat him up. And then that was yeah. the end. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, but but it, it's interesting is, is that, that it's very rarely discussed, I think, and neither of the movies really touches on it. That it's not a very nice thing to shoot your wife dead, even if she is a monster. Um, I guess that's because it's not from his point of view, is it? It's and no. it's not his story. It's a peripheral in that story that um, makes it okay, and in indeed, you know, it, it makes their romance work. Um, after the point where you think that um, it's not going to work and she's gone, oh, you don't love me. Uh, and then when the whole of the truth comes out, it brings them really clo- them closer together. And that, I think, is the genius of the story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I still, I, I don't trust a man who kills his wife. Let's Not let's... even um, Army Hammer. <laughs> not even Army Hammer in Arm his incredible, Hammer. In his, uh, incredible suit. Um, not even and his there. perfect moustache, like <laughs> just like the Hitchcock version. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah. So, so did you enjoy the the Hitchcock version? I think maybe if we talk about that one first, and then we move. Yeah, on to... I re- I really did. Yeah, it's it's an I was really in the mood for an old film, and I think it it really hit that spot. But yeah, I was thoroughly compelled, and I thought the the dialogue was brilliant. It was really really you know whip smart dialogue and great conversations that just revealed so much and i loved how the music was always playing did you notice that like it's always got that kind of those kind of lilting strings in the background and they turn ominous very very quickly at exactly the right moments and i think that kind of old school scoring is something that people don't people don't do anymore because obviously with it can get kind of annoying but in that with this kind of film i felt it really worked to make the atmosphere and i thought it was yeah it was really really well done i really enjoyed it yes yeah it's did um, you feel the same yeah i i i really i really appreciated it i thought it was um it's so well put together and it's a relatively early movie in hitchcock's career um yeah you know it is 1940 um his first film under contract with producer david o russell um related to karen o from (laughs) from the aas i I believe um (laughs) that was david o selznick um (laughs) but um but yeah it's 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 a it's a it's a wonderful movie incredible performances as well um, oh, he also produced um, Gone with the Wind. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if I've ever seen it. It's fine. Um, it's very long. It's long. It's it's odd. It's not 
got the best sort of um politics obviously uh so yeah it's an interesting one maybe we should talk about that sometime actually um but um but yeah and i and think that you know, of course stars olivia de havilland who is um joan fontaine's sister um oh really oh, okay. yeah um but then yeah you look at the you look at the, the 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 main cast and you know Laurence olivier joan fontaine um and judith anderson as mrs danvers is is you know she's she's great in that and i think there's a lot then um for for um for the for the for the second movie the, the 2020 um version to really live up to um but i think performance wise it nearly does the job um yeah i'd say so you know i think um i think uh kristen scott thomas is possibly even better as mrs danvers i absolutely adore her she is fantastic um, yeah um and, and it's then, hard to improve on her performance in under the cherry moon obviously <laughs> but of course of course um but then um you know lily james i think is very good as as the second mrs de Winter. and i know that people have criticized her and criticized in particular army hammer but i think army hammer's all right i, I thought he, he was fine. fine i think he does a fine job you know it's not it's not Lawrence olivier levels but i think he does a perfectly fine job of playing a handsome man in the 1930s who's posh which is what posh and a wife shooter yeah and a wife shooter so so a little bit of trivia for you about um about the uh the the original movie um and this is something that i've just found out now um uh, it had to they had to change the the death of rebecca to comply with the hollywood production code which was a set of moral Uh, guidelines they used to have these kind of codes didn't they like the comics code um, so, so um, it was. Um, it's more commonly known as the Hayes Code, which I think we've talked about on the podcast before. Actually, I think I've talked yeah. about it. Um, where, and apparently, part of the code is that the murder of the spouse had to be punished. So they had to change it that she accidentally died, right? Um, in order to get around the fact that that Maxim, you know, um, you know, doesn't he doesn't get off scot free, um, but he's not imprisoned or 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 given the death penalty no Um, which which i think is is what would have to happen otherwise so um so yeah so that's that's why she tripped over the dishwasher yeah that's why she she fell into the cactus patch yeah Um, sucks to be you rebecca um (laughs) (laughs) but but i think yeah the original movie i think um does stand up very well i think it, it it misses out on some elements um, of the original work but i think maybe i'm being a bit too critical there because you know it is hard to adapt any novel um yeah but at least to... of all in 1940 yeah yeah but i think it does get the core components in there um quite well you know um but then you've got yeah this um god 60 year wait for the for the for the one that we watched and i was very much looking forward to Rebecca. 80 years Oh yes, you're right. Go we on. had this discussion before, didn't we? How like 1980 is 40 years ago. Yeah. And between 1940 and 1980 is 40 years. So we're as far away from 1980 now as this film was from Van Halen. God. This yeah, is... You think about things like that and it feels like there's an impossible distance between <laughs> those two things. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is terrifying, isn't it? It's absolutely yeah. terrifying. Um, Laurence Olivier lived to see Van Halen, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and he died in 1989, um, and loved them. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, huge Re- Van Halen fan. <laughs> but yeah, Rebecca 2020. I was I was really looking forward to because I'm a big fan of Ben Wheatley, the director. Um, Interesting and, direction for him, I thought. Yes, um, and you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the book, and I thought, oh yeah, I can see exactly how Ben Wheatley can make this very strange version of rebecca um you know his his adaptation of high rise is is phenomenal Um, i've still not seen that it's very good very interesting you know the the original novel is weird as all hell um Mm -hmm. and he manages to convert that to the screen very well but i think it's a surprisingly restrained direction from him it feels very classical in its approach and it feels very saccharine at times so you get these odd moments of weirdness i think some of the lighting in the introduction in her dream where you've got that very strange red lighting coming up feels very ben wheatley um 
And then you've got her later dream sequences where there's all of the vines on the floor and things like that. Um, which again feels very much like him as he's very strange. Do any of those kind of things happen in the book? I genuinely can't remember because it's been so bloody long since I read the book. Um, Because obviously there's no dream sequences with the Hitchcock version. The whole thing. They didn't have the budget for that. Beautiful dream sequences. But but, but I think in general, it's quite a restrained film, um, Rebecca 2020, as we'll refer to it from now on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I still quite enjoy it. Enjoyed it, but yeah, it, it is odd in the way it approaches certain things. As you say, yeah, the lighting and the dream sequences and it, the way it lingers on certain things. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 very odd. It, it, it feels very traditional. It feels very um, very colourful and at times awkwardly uplifting in terms of its approach. You know, there's a lot of the, a lot of the visual elements sort of play up you know oh monica is beautiful mandalay is beautiful which is is you know is is partly done but it feels like it's almost to an excess where it's 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 showcasing the the wealth of this this style of life um but i think and as you say it's doing that without really going deep on the sort of the class element of it exactly yeah which i think is 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 partly an issue with the film is that thematically i don't think it's necessarily strong enough um And I think in part that's because, and I don't know if you felt this, but I felt that the first three quarters or maybe two thirds of the movie felt very, very strong, very well paced. But then from the moment that he says, lol, I shot my wife, don't worry. (laughs) You said that with the slight Borat lilt. (laughs) My wife. I shot my wife. (laughs) Um, uh, I watched that as well, by the way. Did you? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? I did. I, I thought it was really good fun. There's, I, some of the scenes feel superfluous and not that useful to the story where it's just like, I've just gone here to gross someone out about a baby. But like it's overall, the, the satirical content hits hard and it's, it's a lot more relevant than Borat should be in 2020. <laughs> oh, yeah. but there are some really, really great moments. Like the whole thing with the, him faxing the ministry, <laughs> keep going back to the fax shop and the guy just patiently handing him the faxes. I don't know why, but I found that really funny. Yeah, no, there, there are some wonderful moments there. And I think, you know, the the great thing about um, Sasha Baron Cohen's um, comedy is that he puts a mirror up to these people and shows them the, the real horror that they are. And I think Borat's one of the best examples of that, of showing the kind of inherent racism and bigotry um, of yeah. people where as long as someone else is willing to show it, they'll be they'll be happy to show it themselves as well um which i think is very interesting and yeah i think it's very it's very well done it, you know it's not as obviously not going to have the same impact as the original did but over time the only things that have been remembered about the original were the mankini and my wife anyway so <laughs> yeah very nice very nice which apparently has been adopted by the kazakhstan tourist board as a slogan so yeah so i saw definitely. that as well which is great um but there aren't really any quotable lines or awkward bits of um clothing in rebecca 2020 unfortunately Um, not apart from the the whole thing with the dress where she gets ordered to change and i'd forgotten that in the hitchcock version it's kind of before the party's even properly started there's only a handful of people there it never shows the entire ball presumably maybe because of budget budgetary constraints but i find i found that almost more effective that it's just him and kind of the family member she's already met um who see that her make that awkward faux pas i felt like it was almost too it was overdone in the new version because it kind of showed her in front of everyone still excruciating but that's kind of a real the real as a a pivotal moment in the film isn't it and and interestingly enough the the hitchcock version in terms of um uh in terms of the dress she's wearing is more accurate so it is a white dress on the original portrait um and and i guess maybe they they changed it into that red and black outfit because it's more you know inherently sexual i guess it's the color, more of the colors yeah. that are thought of to do with sex so it ties in more with rebecca's character and it tied um, in more with the colour and the aesthetics of the film. You know, I mean, Hitchcock's film was in black and white, of course. So I mean, there's yes, not much more you could yeah. have done with that. But I think they made a deliberate choice that did 
did well with the the color palette and the production of the film which i thought was stunning actually yes yeah no it's it's very well done um it's uh yeah it's it's a very it's a very pretty movie i think um and maybe not enough people have have, have recognized this um but actually it's a it's a very well put together very colorful very vibrant film um, but at the same time, it's got the mood to it during the darker moments that actually fits incredibly well. Um, but but I do think, um, and b- before we got distracted by the my wife comment, um, I was I was going to ask you, um, I think the first two thirds of the movie are incredibly well paced. But I think after he says, Soz, I shot my wife, but don't worry, I love you. Um, that final third is feels incredibly rushed, like all of the... yeah all of the stuff to do with the legal case um lily james running off to london <laughs> to, to go look through some doctor's records um and then the fire at mandalay oh, yeah. all feels very very rushed which i think is to the detriment of the movie and you know i'm i'm not one to say let's add some more time to a film i like it when films are uh, keep keep that 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 brevity but this movie really could have done with an extra 20 minutes just to help it breathe in that in that final third yeah or even even 10 or 15 you know yeah we, maybe we could have had another dream sequence and had i don't know some doctor's records coming to life and chasing her or something you know like a, a bit of that <laughs> yeah. just to bring it back to her because the thing is at that point in the film and i think that the hitchcock version suffers from this as well to a degree it almost becomes his story in his courtroom drama and that's kind of boring and doesn't really fit with the tone of the rest of the film and maybe that is to do with the source material as well maybe the book's like that but yeah once you get into the courtroom you just think oh this is dull come on guys he obviously murdered his wife i just want to know how he's gonna get away with it and still be able to be in love with the second mrs de winter which is the point of it is the romance it's not about whether or not he shot his wife but then it becomes about that and it becomes about that in a boring courtroom but don't you think that if this was in if this was in reality don't you think the fact that he shot his wife is more important than whether he's in love nah (laughs) because Um, it's all coming out after he's already found love at that point you're already rooting for them it's all right it doesn't matter he might be a murderer but he's in love it's fine don't worry about it (laughs) Um, yeah that's how romance works like i i I feel as though i think the biggest problem with it well there is a one incredibly bad problem with the film which i'll get into in a bit but the biggest problem apart from that is that the whole mandalay scene at the end where it's on fire is just way too short um yeah oh there's a fire yeah there's a fire oh mrs danvers has jumped into the water too bad (laughs) that's the end (laughs) um yeah not enough made of the kind of big wilhelm scream moment of her jumping into the sea <laughs> yeah but i but i feel as though <laughs> i feel as though the, the the 1940s version did it much better because although it, you know it didn't spend a lot of time on it but you don't need to necessarily spend loads of time but you need enough time to let the horror of it really sink in that mrs Dan you just see her face her. in the window don't you yeah, yeah yeah um and then you sort of it goes in to see her and then like the the ceiling falling in on her um and, I, and that's really shocking and it's really powerful. And I think the, the, the new version really didn't have that emotional punch um, at the end that she was willing to let everything around her burn as a retaliation for the, for the death of, of the, the, you know, the, the, the woman that she, she grew up with, um, that, you know, she, she nurtured and she fostered. Um, and I feel as though, yeah, it really didn't do a good enough job, the new version of, of, of giving that, that moment the the power and the time that it deserved yeah because it's a really big and kind of shocking end but i guess it's because almost at that point it's done isn't it he's you know well sort of got off you know they they are happy together there's just the small matter of the insane housekeeper to deal with and i guess both films suffer from that a little bit where it's just like yep she's dead in the fire film is over but I, but I think the 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 Hitchcock one gets it pretty much bang on in terms of you know it has that shocking conclusion. Whereas I think the the Ben Wheatley one is kind of just like, oh yeah, shit, the house gets on fire, doesn't it? Okay, we'll put that in. It doesn't have enough of the the kind of ominous loud strings that you had in 1940. <laughs> or suddenly it's really loud. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want. That's what we yeah. want from a movie. 
Um, but can I talk to you about the bit that is very, very bad about Rebecca? Yeah, of 2020 course. is right at the end where they're in. Is it Cairo they're in at the end? Oh, the, the tacked on bit. Yeah, and they're like, oh, we're looking for our new home, but we found oh, yeah. love. And it's like, no, that is not right. <laughs> that is very, very We wrong. already know that. We've kind of Again, that's maybe being too explicit about the love and the romance, isn't it? Where and, and, you, you feel it from, you, you are rooting for them because you see her as a, a vulnerable character and you identify with that you know you, you really really appreciate the the vulnerability and innocence that she brings and you 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 want her to succeed but to actually have that depicted in that way it's too much isn't it and i don't really i'm not even sure why because you want that for her but it's just like yeah you don't need to see it and also it completely goes against um the original work or in the original work yes they are traveling but they're not necessarily traveling out of choice. It's because they can never escape the scandal that that and their house burns them. down. Lol. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. Lol, lol. Rich person's house burns down. Um, but but they can never they can never escape that scandal. They can never escape that fire. They can never escape from Rebecca. And that's the whole point of it. At the end, is they're traveling. Yes, they're trying to find a new place. Yes, but the specter of Rebecca will forever be with them. And that's the point. So by putting in this end sequence where it's like, hey, don't worry, we're having hot, sweaty sex in a Cairo hotel whilst we're drinking yeah. loads of booze. Everything's fine. That completely goes against the ghost the of my dead wife can't find us here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it just does not it, it doesn't work with the with the story. And it feels really really stilted and completely out of place and i know that a lot of other fans of of rebecca have not been happy with the new version and i think that end point is is i think the main point of issue that they have it was a bit like the scene they tacked on to the end of the hunger wasn't it where um (laughs) susan sarandon's just looking out over the rooftops of london and going oh yes i have my vampire woman in a box here (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or um, I think the perfect example is the the original ending to Blade Runner from the theatrical cut, where where um, the two of them have, uh, are driving off happily and they've managed to escape. And oh yeah, everything's fine. Um, there's that voiceover, um, which obviously everybody hated and was taken out of it as soon as they could get a director's cut out. Um, and and it's exactly that kind of feeling. And I, I wonder whether that was a, a deliberate decision from Ben Wheatley or whether it was something that was kind of pushed into it to make it. Because I, one thing that I noticed was that a lot of the a lot of the advertisements and a lot of the promotion for Rebecca 2020 really made it up to be a story that was very different from the story that it tells and it really sort of made it out to be this classic purely romantic story whereas in fact it does have this this gothic element to it um that that the 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 trailers never really explored no and i guess that's because it's a netflix production right they want to they want teenagers to watch it they want kids to to watch it to all the wives i've shot before (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) <laughs> um yeah and I, I wonder if that's part of the problem because it is sort of like hey we've got lily james you remember her she's in mamma mia army hammer he's great he knows how to row um <laughs> he knows how to row yeah he's one he's the 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 winkle bosses oh right yeah yeah he's there um and uh and yeah so it's so it's very odd that they really went down that route with it i think it's very strange um and yeah it did kind of ruin it for me i thought the end end was just oh no yeah very very poor understanding and comprehension of the original work tacked on nonsense yeah exactly the, the, uh, i would much have preferred it if there was a literal ghost of Rebecca that turned up in the movie. Yeah. You know? yeah. Hello. And just went, hi, I'm okay with the fact that you shot me because I was a terrible person. <laughs> yeah, Please exactly. enjoy your closure. <laughs> Have some closure, Maxim. It's fine. I will not be ghost cucking you anymore. Yeah. Oh, there's like a, a ghost, like lesbian sex scene between her and Mrs. Danvers. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's what we need. I think we need to... There have apparently been a couple of sequel novels to Rebecca. Um, 
and I think maybe we need one which is written by other people. Yes, yeah. Um, so I think maybe we need one with with Ghost Mrs. Danvers and Ghost Rebecca just being like, oh, "Fuck it, shall we get together?" Yeah, there aren't enough horn, horny ghost books. Yeah, out there. <laughs> no, you've got you've got ghost. Yeah, ghost is, ghost is about a horny ghost. Um, yeah, you know we need more of that. We need more of that. I think now is the the time. So, so having watched two versions of Rebecca, have you an interest in reading the original work? Yeah, it's something I feel like I may get round to, but I have a huge pile of books to read, so it's not going to be any time soon. But it's, it's something I'm sure I will get round to. It's one of my wife's favourite books. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. you must you oh. must tell her that it's also one of my favourite books. It is, a, and one of my granddad's favourite books as well. Oh, it is a it is He's a wonderful name. banging on about it. Um, because so, I think that. Um, De Maurier is one of those writers who I think is she has a she has a following and she has some reverence but I feel as though she should be treated with much more acclaim than she is because mm. you know you've got um, books like My Cousin Rachel Jamaica Inn obviously she wrote The Birds as well yeah um, and Don't Look Now too um, mm-hmm. it's uh, you know she is which um, people don't ne- don't necessarily know traces back to her do you no know? no particularly exactly. do you, don't look now which is this really classic horror film yeah yeah um it's um it's yeah it's, it's really interesting um how diverse her works were and i don't know have you ever read the the short story of the birds no i haven't um, because it is very very different from the film um they're almost completely different apart from the fact that there's murderous birds so um, in one of them birds aren't real <laughs> there's all a government conspiracy that the solar powered um yeah that's exactly right um, and that was then people were on to this even then <laughs> uh, yeah they're onto it even then um but yeah so so i think it's really interesting how diverse her work was um how complex her works were um but with these stories that grabbed people um and so, you know, as our listeners know, books are well rubbish, yeah? They're trash. But yep. my books mission for you all is to pick up something by Daphne du Maurier. It could be a short story, could be a novel, whatever you choose. And give it a read and think, ah, oh, this reads really well for something written in the 1930s. Yeah. And, you know, all kind of, she does have that reverence with good reason. But perhaps, as you say, it's not as, she's not as known on the mainstream as other writers who are of more or lesser stature yeah everyone talks about fucking i don't know i'm trying to think of a a acclaimed writer who doesn't deserve it now shakespeare yeah fucking bill shakespeare (laughs) fucking chaucer that shit (laughs) jeffrey chaucer more like jeffrey archer (laughs) Um, yeah i mean he also writes books he does unfortunately (laughs) <laughs> I knew I knew of him as a novelist before I knew that he was a politician slash dirtbag slash perjuring shitbag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Give give De Maurier a read, and yeah. So uh, m- my big question for you: Rebecca or Jane Eyre? See, yeah, there's definitely a through line between those isn't there and Jane Eyre also my wife is a big fan of and I think sees the parallels between this and we talked about it a little bit after watching it but um I I would choose Rebecca over Jane Eyre yeah I think I feel like it's it's got it's more contemporary and it's more again the the element of romance really comes out just so brilliantly um that you're you're rooting for her and for them so much more and that still has that kind of gothic um overtone but it's the the romance succeeds in a much bigger way and that for me is more important yeah i i think i agree i i i also really love jane eyre i think it's a a wonderful um a wonderful novel um particularly when you read it alongside white sock soc um yeah which is the 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 follow-up um written in the 60s i think it was from the from the wife's perspective i think is very very strong and when you when you compare and contrast the two it's very good at some point i think we should watch the 2011 movie of jane eyre hmm. um which is which i is haven't good. seen it um 
uh, directed by Kerry Joji Fukunaga, uh, Fukunaga, who did oh, um, yeah. did uh, Beasts of No Nation. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, and he's directed No Time to Die as well, the most recent. That's right. Um, Bond movie, which is never delayed. going to be released. <laughs> no, it's never coming out. Oh. Um, so it's yeah, it's a really interesting movie. Um, it's got Mia Wasikowska. It's got Michael Fassbender. Um, what more do you want than yeah than than Michael Fassbender trapping his wife in an attic? <laughs> spoiler, so totally spoiler alert for Jaina. Spoiler alert for Jaina. <laughs> you're fine with that, but it's not okay for Army Hammer to shoot his wife in self defense. <laughs> well, no, I'm not fine with that, and that's part of the reason why I think Wed Sargasso C is such an interesting <laughs> book. Um, is that it explores actually the the misogyny and racism inherent in that time period. Um, and how yeah. all of that comes together to to you know torture this poor woman, um, and I think yeah. So so no, I'm not I'm not fine with that, and I'm not fine with Maxim De Winter shooting his wife, even if she was evil and even if she was going to die, because he didn't know that. He thought he was just shooting his wife. Yeah, you do it. You do it all the time. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to die. Oh, I thought my gun was a cigar lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See. Hey, it's a it's a joke, Ute. I'm gonna shoot you. Oh, that's what what I say to my wife Rebecca all the time. New Mrs. De Winter. Don't worry, I won't shoot you. Um, yeah, Maxim De Winter, fucking trash, trash man. Get out. <laughs> Hashtag cancel it? Maxim De Winter. Twenty. Oh, is, is Max De Winter's getting cancelled because he shot his cancelled. wife? Cancelled. Tell you what, this cancel culture has gone too far. All you do is shoot your wife, and then everyone's coming after you. It's a witch hunt, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, man can't even shoot I'm his gonna, wife anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna go on Joe Rogan and talk about how it's fine that I shot my wife because she was bad, and then maybe all those liberals in the media will leave me alone. Yeah, and then all the like right wing podcasts will be showing the clips from the Joe, Rog- Joe Rogan podcast. The right wing people retweeted thousands and thousands of times a clip of Ma- Max Twinter going, "Yes, I shot my wife." I shot Joe my Rogan's wife. Joe Rogan's like, but huh, she deserved it. Interesting. It I get paid the hil- most hilarious, insane, ridiculous, evil amount of money to make a bullshit podcast. A really, Let me talk about that for for an hour, and then we can talk about how you shot your wife. A really badly recorded podcast of oh it sounds like it's in a couple of tin cans it's awful yeah um you'll have you'll have ben shapiro going so hypothetically if you shot your wife and she was evil but she also was terminally ill should you be sent to jail for it i'd say no yeah do you like my ben i shoot shapiro? my wife all the time do, do, do you like my ben shapiro yeah? that's very very good very good <laughs> he's actually here with me say hi ben <laughs> oh hi, hi, hi ben uh, hypothetically, are you, are you enjoying um, WAP still? Uh, your hi- favorite song. <laughs> uh, hypothetically, if I was to appear on your podcast, would I get paid? No, no. Always walked we, off. We don't pay. He's not happy. He's not happy about that. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. He thought he was getting paid for this. He's he's getting into. I keep him in um, one of the chest of drawers. He he fits in quite nicely in there with a little pillow. Oh, okay. He's just going to as long as he's now. comfortable. Going to bed in the strop. I'll, I'll bring in some ice cream later. Yeah, he'll be fine. Give him a pat on the head. Yeah, it's all right, Ben. Don't worry. Um, anyway, <laughs> right. I don't know how we. I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, Maxim De Winter is a scumbag, and I don't like him. Although I do appreciate his suits. Yeah, I think he d- he's dressed very well in both versions of the film, and I appreciate the mustache. Yeah, no, it's a good. It's a good tash. Good tash. Um, good film to kick so, off November. So, so have you got anything else you'd like to say about Rebecca? No, I don't think so. I, I enjoyed both of them. I, I did think the 2020, 2020 version was still enjoyable, despite the flaws that you mentioned, which I cannot deny. It was still an enjoyable and entertaining watch, and I think is well worth your time, as is the Hitchcock version, which I think I prefer of the two. Um, but yeah, both were decent, I thought. Yeah, so so I'd agree. Um, I I was slightly disappointed in Rebecca 2020 um, because of the issues thematically that it has where i don't think it necessarily is a great adaptation of the original work but i thought it had some interesting moments i thought it looked very good i thought the performances in general were decent as well um christian scott thomas is wonderful um yeah so so yeah so i i enjoy both of them i thought they were they were both um 
they're both good. Oh, and our man Pete Doherty's in it as well. <laughs> our man Pete. Um, yeah, no, he's good. He's good. Um, <laughs> again, playing playing a great little character. Um, but yeah. Um, so um, so how are we? Get, do, do I want? Do you want me to give some trivia, or shall we rank them? You gave a little bit of trivia already, but yeah. if you've got some more, I'm always interested to hear it. <laughs> Um, so, so this was Sam Riley and Lily James's reunion after Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, obviously, which is great. Good. Um, Sam Riley and Army Hammer were also both in Free Fire, the previous Ben Wheatley movie. Oh, yes. Which is great. Um, so, uh, Kristen Scott Thomas's character, Mrs. Danvers, states that Mandalay had been a gift from Henry VIII, um, famous winner of World War Two. Yeah, um, yeah. Kristen also played Anne Boleyn's mother in The Other Boleyn Girl, which centers on the relationship between Anne and Henry Henry VIII and is very bad. Set in 1946. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so, uh, so, so, yeah, so, so that'll, that'll, that'll do, I think. A little little bit of trivia. So how are we going to rank this? How many, how many times would you shoot your wife before, (laughs) before dumping her body in the sea? (laughs) <laughs> very good yeah how, or how many times do you have to shoot your wife before you get invited onto joe rogan's podcast to talk about it <laughs> yeah, okay how many how many bullets go into your wife before joe rogan will have you on his podcast that's great um so so should we do them separately yeah i think so yeah um so so i think i would give uh 17 to alfred hitchcock's rebecca um I think it is a, a wonderful movie. It's stood up very well to the test of time, um, and yeah, it's good. It's f- for its time. It's a re- it's a really great movie. Um, for twenty twenty, I'd maybe go for a thirteen. It's pretty. It 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 works pretty well, but those thematic issues and a really bad ending do hold it back for me. Yeah, I I will agree with you on the Hitchcock one. I think that's that's pretty right. It's a pretty high score, but definitely well deserved. Um, but I'll go a couple higher on the newer one. I'll give it a fifteen. I felt like it was yeah, it's three quarters of the way there for me. I don't have the same qualms as you have with the divergence from the source material, and I thought it was very pretty and very well put together. Um, and I don't care that Mister De Winter shot his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't care. You're fine with it. You want to keep that patriarchy going, you scumbag. Yep. You're after that's you're me. after those outright populist dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've become. You'll set I need up the money. A, set up a parlay account. Um, parlay or parlor? I don't know how it's pronounced. You know the new right wing version of Twitter. Oh, good. Where I'm you're allowed really to be racist. Um, it's it's spelled P A R L E R. So for me, I pronounce it parlay, like the French for speak. But I've seen uh, other people right, pronounce okay. it like parlor. Um, but I choose to believe it's parlay. But it's trash, basically. Trash. Yeah, trash either way, racists. it's bad. Um, either yeah. way, Ben Shapiro is on there right now going, Help me, I'm stuck in a drawer in a man's house. <laughs> I've got a pillow. He's dressed me in a little elf costume. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, right, okay. Uh, what have we got up next then? What is What is coming up? Uh, well, as as previously mentioned, um, we wanted to give a big thanks and a shout out to Lizzie at Acast and her whole crew who are just, you know, the greatest podcast hosts in the world and we're grateful for everything they do. And I was chatting with Lizzie and she said, I said, did she have any requests? And she wanted us to do Isn't It Romantic, which is a nonsense Netflix film that came out last year that has Hemsworths in it. So why not? Oh, right. This is the Rebel Wilson one, isn't it? Yeah, I've actually already seen it, but I'm going to watch You've it You've already seen it, I say. I have not seen this. Um, all right. Yeah, it was one where we watched it last year. I watched it with my wife. And um, <laughs> my wife. we were going to get around to talking about it, and we never did for the show. So I'm glad that we now have an excuse. Interestingly enough, I already know what I'm going to pick next. So we're going to be doing a Netflix double bill, which I'm super excited about. Um, cool, cool. But... Uh, but yeah, I am. I well, let's am, not spoil the surprise now. No, 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 no. We will, uh, we will, we will cover it next time out. But yeah, isn't it romantic? Yes, it is. Digging it. it will which it I be mean as romantic as a man shooting his wife? Is the question? No, nothing. Nothing could be as romantic as that kind of grand gesture. It's the. You know? <laughs> 
Exactly. That's what you do, isn't it? You want to show yeah. your wife you love her? You shoot her. <laughs> Lessons yeah. learned from Rebecca. Yeah. If you love someone, you should let them go. <laughs> by shooting by them. let them go, we mean shoot them and dump their body at sea. Yeah. That's romance, folks. <laughs> All righty. All right. So go and do that. And also... Um, Send us your recommendations for films. You can reach us on Twitter at Big Boys Don't Pod on the emails Big Boys Don't Cry Podcast at gmail dot com. Always love to hear from you. Um, there's a link in our show notes where you can give us money. Um, it's just a one off thing. If you want to say thanks for all the time and effort that we put into this, and if you like the nonsense that we talk every week, um, give us a tip, basically. Yeah, and and let us know. Have you ever had an affair with your cousin? You weirdos. <laughs> um have you ever shot yeah. your wife <laughs> yeah if you could burn down a big expensive house which house would you burn down yeah does it belong to jacob reese mogg yay or nay <laughs> answers on a postcard please <laughs> to the usual address <laughs> exactly all right and we'll be back next week to talk about isn't it romantic all righty bye-bye all right bye